Okay, Shalom Lechulam, Mosmanim, Le'od, Limud, Yeshayahu, Be'yom Revi'i Be'erev. So hello everyone and welcome to another Wednesday night Isaiah study. And tonight we're looking at Isaiah 56 verses 1 through 6. And I titled the study, um, let's go to the title slide here. Um, I titled the study, Being Not Just a Covenant People, But Also a People of Faith, right? And so uh, before we begin, let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for this, this time that we can study your word. Lord, we thank you for your word that you've provided for us through the centuries and that we can come to know you. And tonight, Lord, as we study, we ask that your truth would go forth, that you would speak to our hearts, help us to walk and to live according to your ways, your holy ways, Lord. And we just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And, and we ask, Lord, that you'd be with Israel, help them to overcome their enemies. And we just pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, so Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 6. You know, this, this chapter continues you know, to emphasize and expand on the themes that were present in the earlier chapters. You know, despite the comprehensive promises of the of the coming Messiah, like we read in Isaiah 52 and 53, and the return and forgiveness in Isaiah 55, there is still more to be addressed, and specifically the application of God's righteousness in daily life and the qualifications of for being part of the family of God. We note the specific the significance of Isaiah 56 that the the historical context is less important than the necessity to walk in God's righteous ways and to recognize that we often fall short of doing this. And as we continue on in Isaiah, the chapters 56 through 66, you know, to the end of the book, explore how God's grace and his mercy enables people to live righteously highlighting the importance of the covenant of God, obedience, and having a relationship with God and, and the Lord and His Messiah. And the focus is not merely on being a part of the covenant people by faith, but also demonstrating the character of God as His people, right? So this is emphasized as there is Gentile inclusion needing to learn what it means to be a representative of God, the God of Israel in this world. And we note the similar themes that Yeshua taught in the New Testament text. And so I have a few verses here from uh, Yeshua and Paul. And here in Matthew 5, verse 16, it says, Let your light shine before men such in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So we note here, Yeshua is speaking about living out the righteousness of God. And, and this verse parallels the call to live according to God's commands, demonstrating his character through mercy and grace and good deeds that glorify him. And we also know what Paul wrote here in Ephesians and in Galatians. He says that in Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no, no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, crafted in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Okay, and then uh, again, you know, this is the ma'asim tovim, the good works, right, that God has created, you know, according to the scriptures. In Galatians 3.28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus, in the Messiah. And so these passages, they really reiterate the balance between grace and ma'asim tovim, you know, good deeds, which is synonymous to the grace delivered transformation and the righteous living that is discussed in the remainder of, the, of Isaiah here, Isaiah 56 through chapter 66, and Paul speaks to the Gentile inclusion here in Galatians, where foreigners and eunuchs are welcomed into the covenant and emphasizing that God's people are marked by character and relationship and not just by being born Jewish. And so these themes underscore the continuity of these concepts across both the Tanakh and the New Testament text, which emphasize the transformative power of God, of His grace, and the necessity of living a life that reflects His righteousness. And so these insights highlight the power of God through His mercy and grace to transform our lives to reflect His righteousness. And 
Isaiah chapter 56 through 66 encourages us to live out God's principles, showing the world his love and justice. And we note again how entrance into the covenant of God comes by faith and then being his people, you know, that we are called to walk in his ways, which embody his character in our daily lives. And so our lives today should reflect these things because they demonstrate a living relationship with God that influences our behavior and our choices. And remember, the New Testament context that Yeshua said that we're to walk, we're to follow after him. He obeyed Torah. He showed us how to live it out, right? And so the New Testament speaks of these things as well, and it speaks of allowing the God of Israel and his Messiah to change us so deeply that others can see that his love and righteousness through us. And so this mirrors the New Testament concept of grace and works, showing that faith is evidenced by the way that we live and we treat, how we treat others. And, and again, you know, this is a powerful call to integrate faith into every aspect of our lives, making our actions a testimony of God's character and his love for us, right, and, and to the world, right? And so um, that concludes the introduction to this study. Next, let's look at part two of the study and... Uh, see what the Hebrew text has to say.